This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship. A warm welcome to those of you who are gathered here, and a warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing together our opening hymn, Holy God, We Praise Your Name, number 414. <laughs> The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray, Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal one in one. We, we praise your power majestic one and three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In the Bible, wisdom is portrayed in terms sometimes human and sometimes divine. Often, wisdom is personified as feminine. In this passage, woman wisdom is depicted not only as the first creation of God, but also as God's helper, rejoicing in God's creation, especially in human beings. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Does not wisdom call and does not understanding raise her voice? On the heights beside the way, at the crossroads, she takes her stand. Beside the gates in front of the town, at the entrance of the portal, she cries out, To you, all people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. 
The Lord created me at the beginning of his work, the first of his acts of long ago. Ages ago, I was set up at first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there was no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought up forth. When he had not made, yet made earth and fields or the world's first bits of, bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit so that waters might not transgress his command, when he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the human race. Word of God, word of life. In Romans, Paul describes the life of faith in reference to God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Even now, we have peace with God through Jesus, and our hope for the future is grounded in the love of God that we experience through Christ's Holy Spirit. A reading from the book of Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has, given, uh, given, that has been given to us. Word of God, word of life. We rise to receive the Holy Gospel. <laughs> The Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. If there are any... Whoa. If there are any children here, I would like to invite them to come forward for the shorter sermon. Good morning. Have a seat. So I'm wondering, I'm going to have to whisper here. All right, I think they're turning me down a little. I'm wondering, do you have more than one name? Only one name? Okay, your parents call you Riley, but sometimes they call you Grace. Elizabeth is your middle name, so you have a middle name. Okay, and do you have a last name? Moss. Moss. And do you ever have a nick? Do you have any other nicknames? 
whoa. Say that again. Your dad calls you what? Bean or Beanosaurus Rex. <laughs> Dads have very special nicknames for their kids. <laughs> so I have a lot of names too. I have four names. Christian, Gerhardt, Nicely, Hollick. I Christian was my first name. Gerhardt was my middle name. That was also my dad's name. Then when I married Tiffany, I took her last name as my second middle name. And I have a last name. Now, sometimes people also have different names for me. Like, some of the people out here call me Pastor. Now, what do you think my daughter calls me? Yeah, Dad. She calls me Dad. And what do you think my brother calls me? Brother, right. So today, when we celebrate Trinity, Holy Trinity Sunday, we're reminded of some of the different names for God. Can you think of any different names for God? The Lord. That's very good. The Holy Spirit. That's really good. Yeah, sometimes we talk about God. What's the first letter of the alphabet? A. And what's the last letter? Z. Sometimes we say that God is Alpha and Omega. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last letter. Sometimes we think of God as sheep, a lamb, and sometimes we think of Jesus as our shepherd. But three of the most common ones that we use when we think of God are Father, Son, and you already said the last one, Holy Spirit. And that's one of the things we're celebrating today. When, when we were baptized, you want to take a guess how many times I pour water on Someone, when I baptize them? A lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's good. That's okay. That you got baptized at a different church. So when I baptize people, I pour water on them three times, and I say, in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes when I began worship, I said to people, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Have you ever seen people do this? It's sometimes we do this to it's a way that I can use my body of Jesus to think of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, yeah, so I go I, I sort of make an imaginary cross from my forehead to my chest. You wanna try it? I go down. Yeah? Then I come up a little bit and I go in to my heart and over to the other side and back to the middle. So it's kind of like if I had a pencil, I was going down and then over, drawing a cross on myself. Sometimes I do it out to the congregation. I say, God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I'm doing. I'm drawing a big cross as I remember these names for God. So I invite you to listen during the rest of the service if you hear, if you hear Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I think it's wonderful sometimes to have different names for God to remind us of the different ways we experience God's love. Let's have a prayer together. Jesus, thank you for our names. And thank you for our nicknames, especially the nicknames people who love us give to us. Thank you that you know us by name. And we thank you and we praise your names, O oh God. Alpha, Omega, Lamb and Shepherd, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. As we prepare to pray, I invite you to close your eyes and to take three deep breaths. Breathe in and be mindful of God who created this world. Be mindful of the floor beneath your feet, the air around you, the sun and the sky above. Take a second breath. 
and be mindful of Jesus who came into this world and died on the cross in compassion and love, who rose from the dead, offering you hope in the triumph of life. And take one more breath and be mindful of the Holy Spirit, filling your lungs, giving you life, and calling you to action in the world. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Amen. Language can be so beautiful. Words can comfort, challenge, inspire. Sometimes they can be used to paint pictures. I think, for example, of Mary Oliver's poem, Praying. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention, then patch a few words together. And don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. I can remember times when people would say something to me reflecting their thought that a pastor's prayer is somehow better or more beautiful or more perfect. Or perhaps you in your context of your family or friends, some think that you are the one who should pray because you do it better. And Mary Oliver reminds us that when praying, it doesn't have to be the blue iris. Of course, words can also be hurtful or be limiting. That's why we sometimes use the phrase, words can't begin to describe what I saw or felt. Or perhaps why St. Francis of Assisi supposedly said, preach the gospel at all times, use words if necessary. Today we celebrate Holy Trinity Sunday. This raises the question, what language do we use for God? One traditional response is to say the Bible depicts God as Father, the Bible depicts God as Son, the Bible depicts God as Spirit. And so we say the Bible depicts a triune God, even if the Bible itself never uses the word triune or trinity. Historically, we know that as the creeds came into being, there were many conversations, arguments, even fights that centered around how we understand God and what language we use to express this. Now, I will confess that I really do enjoy sitting in the kitchen, having iced tea or a beer, and having intense discussion about theological issues like, how is it that we are simultaneously both sinners and saints? How it is that God is fully human and fully divine? How it is that bread is just bread and the body of Christ? How it is that God is three in one and one in three. But today my intent is not to try to explain or defend or intellectualize the Trinity. Rather, I want to lift up the question, how do we experience God? And perhaps how might our Trinitarian language for God help us to experience God? I, together with others in the congregation, Gail and Russ Olson, Jay Tishner, Pastor Tiffany just returned from the New England Synod Annual Assembly in Worcester, where every year Lutheran churches from throughout New England gather together, though this was our first in-person gathering in several years. At Synod Assembly, as someone prepared to lead us in prayer, they led us in something very similar to the three-breath prayer that I shared with you. And I found that it helped me to experience God not only in my head, but also with my heart and my body and my breath and my breathing. On Thursday night, worship was held in Trinity Lutheran Church in Worcester. It was a large sanctuary, but the two or 300 of us in attendance filled much of it with energetic worship. How interesting, I thought, to be in Trinity Lutheran Church just before Trinity Sunday. And I looked around the sanctuary and at the stained glass and at the, the paintings on the ceiling. 
I looked around to see if somehow the atmosphere there would give me this, this amazing epiphany, this insight into what the Trinity is in a powerful, convicting way to share with you. And there really wasn't anything noticeable that jumped out at me concerning the Trinity. Instead, I felt a sense of some of the breadth and depth of our church. People from all over New England. We were many, but we were one. Somehow in relationship to one another for the sake of the gospel. The overarching theme for this year's assembly was collaboration. Collaborate for Christ's sake. And this, I thought, is a good way to think of Trinity, collaboration. God collaborating with us. Father, Son, Holy Spirit collaborating for the sake of God's mission in the world. Last week at our memorial service for Jack Caymans, in prayer and eulogy and homily, we gave thanks for God. We gave thanks to God for Jack, husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, friend, neighbor, soldier, mail carrier, child of God. Who was Jack? He was all of these. Behind each name is a relationship or action. Language for God does likewise, describes relationship and action. God is Father, God is Son, God is Holy Spirit. The Father relates to us, builds a bridge through the Son, Jesus. The Father builds a bridge, a relationship with us through wisdom, which incidentally many in the early church interpreted as a reference to Jesus. Some others, however, interpreted wisdom as an attribute of God, a gift from God, or even a lifestyle that begins with the fear of God. And others here in wisdom, the Holy Spirit, the love of God flowing through us through the Holy Spirit. Rather than trying to explain Trinity, one of our communion hymns that we will be singing presents the image of a divine dance. Trinity is our God who dances, and we are invited not to mental gymnastics or intellectual comprehension, but to the dance. Come, join the dance of Trinity. The words from that first verse, come, join the dance of Trinity before all the world's begun, the interweaving of the three, the Father, Spirit, Son. The universe of space and time did not arise by chance, but as the three, in love and hope, make room within their dance. Prayers like the breath prayer, hymns such as come join the dance of Trinity, show us that Trinity, even when expressed in traditional terms like Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, doesn't need to be reduced to dogmatic exp explanation or formula, but can be a witness to mystery, can be language that opens up our imagination that invites us to dance. There was a time historically when the church sought to find unity in some common understanding of God. Perhaps our time, however, calls us to enter the dance floor, step onto the dance floor, knowing that there are different dances, maybe even to imagine God as in other ways, as creator, redeemer, sustainer, rather than Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Perhaps others are even bolder as they step onto the dance floor. In just a moment, we'll be singing a hymn that I am guessing will be new to most of us. And that hymn talks about the many names for God. The first verse says, bring many names, beautiful and good. Celebrate in parable and story, holiness and glory, living, loving God. Hail and Hosanna, bring many names. The hymn goes on to speak of God as mother, father, old, aching, old, aching God, young, growing God, and great, living God. I invite you to consider how our understanding of Trinity and triune God, how all our names for God might help open us to experience God more fully each and every day, 
especially as we navigate a world in which we face great challenges, including broken relationships, breakdowns in communication, breakdowns in civility, decency, kindness, sometimes a breakdown even in hope. What does it mean to believe in, to experience, and witness to a God who is in relationship with God's self and with us? And so let us sing together. We will turn to our hymn of the day printed in your bulletin. It's a hymn that Maggie brought to my attention. It comes from the new Lutheran supplemental hymnal, which we used extensively at assembly. And I think Maggie is going to help us learn it a little bit before we all stand and sing it together. The Athanasian Creed with the Apostles and Nicene Creed is one of the three ecumenical creeds of Christianity. It is named after Athanasius, who was born in 295, and though no longer in common liturgical use, its primary concern is with articulating the triune nature of God. And so today on Holy Trinity Sunday, we affirm part of the Athanasian Creed. We do not worship three gods, but one God in three persons. I invite you to join me. Now this is the Catholic faith.
Additions to our prayer list this week <coughs> include Bill Heffernan, Marguerite's brother in the hospital, and Pam Schultz, who is at Liberty Commons in nursing. <coughs> One God, giver of life, you established peace through your son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. God of grace, loving redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Further the work of international col collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace, abiding comforter, you call to all who live, restore severed relationships, and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief. God of grace. Yeah. Holy three, you are community, and you create community. Build up ministries to support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital relationships in our congregation and beyond. God of grace, are there other intercessions to be offered? Holy God, we remember your saints for their strong faith and witness, even unto death, especially the Emmanuel Nine, whom we commemorate this week. Console grieving families, stir up in us the resolve to end the sin of white supremacy and pursue the courageous path of justice. God of grace, God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of our risen Lord be with you always. I invite you to greet those around you sharing the peace of Christ.
God, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for everything you have given us, and we offer it for your glory. In Christ's name. The Lord be with you. And also with you. To lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, O God our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise, call us to your table, grant us your life. When the world was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmists cried out for healing, and full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. On the night on which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and poured it for them to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. Amen. Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. Amen. Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. Amen. O oh God, you are breath. Send your spirit on this meal. O oh God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O oh God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic, O oh God, most motherly, O oh God, our strength and our song, you show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the spirit of our risen savior, life in you, now and forever. We're bold to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
In just a moment, the ushers will invite you to come forward for Holy Communion. This is the Lord's table and all are welcome. As you come forward, I will offer you bread. If anyone needs gluten-free bread, please ask for it, it is available. You will then be offered, you will then be offered wine. There's wine, there's also grape juice, wine in the circular trays, grape juice in the rectangular trays. And as you, after, as you receive bread and wine, we invite you to partake of the elements here near the altar where you receive them and then to return to your seats by the side aisles. If anybody would like a blessing instead of communion, you are invited to ask for it or to cross your hands over your chest. And if you need communion in your seat, please let one of the ushers know. The risen Christ dwells with us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray together. We give you thanks, almighty God. May you go forth into the week and into the world, experiencing God in many ways, by many names, through many people, but always experiencing and sharing the love of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Again, a warm welcome on this Holy Trinity Sunday. There are a few announcements that I would like to draw your attention to. You'll find most of the announcements in the yellow insert. One is that immediately following worship downstairs in the fellowship hall, Pastor John Stendel, Pastor Tiffany, and myself will be leading our final study on the creeds. And all of you are, anyone who's interested, we'd love to have you come down and join us for that. Tiffany, you're going to speak to the St. John's? I would. Good morning, church. So this is the week that Tim Tennis from St. John's Bible Project in um, Collegeville, Minnesota, is coming to join us and offer presentations explaining this. The St. John's Bible was, they started planning it in 1995. They started writing it in 2001, and it took 10 years to complete it. He's going to talk about that process. So there is a flyer on the table at the in, in the narthex, also at the beginning of the exhibit. And on the back of it, in addition to a summary in your yellow inserts, is when these presentations are. The first one will be at 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday. It is a Zoom presentation for those who cannot be here in person. And uh, he will be here in the building offering that out. At 2 o'clock, we have an art reception, including live music and food and a chance to get to see it with other members of the community. And then at 3 p.m. that day is a replica of the first um, 1030 session, but it will be in person here in the sanctuary. And he will be bringing um, visuals of uh, some of the other art that you don't see on the walls or in the Gospel Acts book here. And then he will do another presentation on Wednesday at 1030 again here in the sanctuary. So please take these flyers with you, pass them out to people who need to know or would be interested. If you would like the Zoom link, you can email or call the church office and we will send that to you so that you can participate. We're really excited. Thank you for coming in and participating with us. Thank you. And one other announcement I'd like to draw your attention to is that beginning next Sunday, we will be offering a worship service at 11, a somewhat abbreviated service at 11. But for those of you who have found 930 challenging, for those of you who may be watching worship later this afternoon on the recording, um, we want you to know about the 11 o'clock service. It is both for meeting needs within our membership and for extending hospitality to those who are visiting the Cape in the summer. We, that also means we are looking for some extra help um, for people to participate in those worship services as lector, usher, communion assistant. If you are interested and able, um, please sign up on the bulletin board in the hallway or speak to Pastor Tiffany or myself. We have a tradition. I was reflecting on how this was my first time presiding in a while, a vacation in Spain, then the Oregon Search Committee took a field trip to Maine, Synod Assembly in Worcester. It feels good to be grounded back in Harwich. Um, we have a tradition of welcoming those of you who are visiting, either for the first time or after a time away, and asking you to share with us where home is for you. So we invite some of you to do that.
Yes. Your sister's from where? Okay. Thank you. And, and as many of you know, Kate is on our prayer list. We are wrapping her in prayer for healing, and it's wonderful to have you here. Yes. From Iowa, welcome. That's how, we, that's how we know summer is coming as, as our friends in Christ start coming from many different places. <laughs> you are most welcome. <laughs> We're very glad to have you with us. Are there any other announcements to be shared this morning? Then let us stand and sing our closing hymn together, 413. Go in peace, serve the Lord.